Thank you very much. And, and thanks to all of you for being here. So uh, this talk will be about uh, logical formalisms where we can capture belief uh, as based on like pos possibly inconsistent information. So as you see, it's a very much a joint work. So uh, Sabine, Daniel and Sajad from France and Andre and me here in Prague uh, have started uh, like to look into it last year. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> basically I think all of them are present so they can help with uh, clarification and answering your questions which you are welcome to ask like anytime. So just a very, um, very brief, okay, very brief uh, introduction into like um, motivation uh, <clears throat> and some like less contra controversial uh, statements maybe. So what I think uh, it's natural in certain contexts to view belief as based on evidence. So uh, such context might be kind of like uh, investigations or even like scientific context. Um, so belief of uh, an agent can be based on information uh, and the uh, information might come from sources. So um, agent will just uh, base her belief on uh, sources which she considers uh, good enough. So uh, of course, like once you start talking about information, then there's all these things like uh, incompleteness, uncertainty and contradictoriness, which, which uh, like comes come in the picture because especially if the information comes from uh, like multiple sources or it's a kind of heterogeneous kind, then uh, it's potentially going to be contradictory or conflicting. Uh, it is like almost always incomplete. And like sometimes you cannot hope, I mean, to kind of get uh, certainty. So there is like all these things which we need to take in account. Um, and uh, as I mean, we all know separately, they have all been taken into account like in uh, many and many formalisms. Um, so uh, we have logics for incomplete information. We have logics for contradictory information. We have logics for potentially contradictory and incomplete information like at the same picture. Uh, there's a, a like beautiful mathematical theory for uh, how to deal with uncertainty. So there's like basically all kind of uh, converges to be based on classical probability theory in the end. So, and th there's also uh, formalisms which kind of accommodate at least the first two, like the incompleteness and uncertainty, like in one picture, because you can be, I mean, you can also have kind of incomplete information, like in, incomplete probabilistic information. So, I mean, you can be in the aim of various uh, theories, which uh, I mean, we can put under one proof, which is called imprecise probabilities. It can be this kind of lower pro probabilities or um, sets of classical probability maps and so on. <clears throat> but I think that the second uh, two uh, aspects, namely uncertainty and contradictoriness at the same picture are sort of like uh, less dealt with. Like, so uh, this is what, what we would like to, to kind of put in the picture. So I'm not saying that actually contradictoriness of information is not dealt with in the, like some of the frameworks I have mentioned. Like, of course, like they, I mean, often like you just take also uncertainty as uh, as based on potential conflicting information. Uh, so I'm not saying that all these things are kind of wrong or I'm, I'm not kind of uh, offering something like terribly new, but I still have a feeling that, that there is something to be said for uh, when uh, I just want my belief to kind of reflect the nature of information of which it is based. So uh, let me just say like a few more words about the uh, like potentially contradictory information. So what logical formalisms can do, uh, so I mean, there's 
there's uh, plenty of these para consistent or inconsistent tolerant uh, for balisms. But I mean, what what we will look at is uh, is uh, is the way how you can like deal with it by simply splitting uh, information and taking like positive and negative information sort of independently. So in terms of evidence you you might want to distinguish between evidence for and evidence against something well why because i mean they even they might come from completely different sources in completely different ways so you would uh, you would design some experiment to uh, gather evidence for something differently than you would design experiment to gather evidence against the same same thing so, uh, so what this kind of solution gives you like a certain freedom because you stop assuming that uh, negative information is kind of complementary to positive information. So in terms of evidence supporting belief, if I don't have evidence for something, it doesn't mean I have negative evidence against the same thing. So, um, and so this has been done, of course, it's been done like in terms of logical systems. Um, and there are some, there are some uh, for, formalisms which also like touch on uncertainty and like we want to put it all together. So I will try to describe some uh, logical frameworks where belief can be based on potentially contradictory information and where the, uh, information comes from multiple sources and is of probabilistic nature. So basically, um, our goal is to come up like, I'm, I'm not pushing for one particular system, of course. It's rather kind of modular framework because in the end you will have many different situations which I mean you would like to uh, sum up like under this. So, um, uh, what uh, kind of examples we often have in mind when we think about it intuitively is really kind of investigation. So you are an investigator and you collect evidence. So it doesn't have to be crime, right? It has to be, <laughs> it can be uh, something else. So uh, naturally your information comes from different sources and is of different uh nature and also i mean it's not kind of uh, uh sharp i mean so i mean you can have for example cctv uh recordings of some person being at a certain time in a certain place but the picture is grainy so you are not completely certain it's the same person so you run it through the software and it tells you like 70 percent like probability it is him and at the same time, you might have a kind of ATM block where again, like the same person supposedly draw money with his credit card. So, um, and it, like, I mean, almost never you are completely certain, right? So uh, this motivates like why to uh, take into account like uncertainty and, and multiplicity of sources and conflict and incompleteness of information at the same time. So how will we deal with it is uh, we will um, we will use um, uh, for the level of information on which the belief is to be based. We will use Belknap done for valued logic, which is also uh, referred to as first degree entailment. And it is precisely because it is a kind of uh, like uh, uh, formalism, which very clearly builds on this uh, distinction between like taking positive and negative part of information independently and interlink it, in, interlink it with a kind of uh, negation, which then is uh, involutive, that Morgan, but doesn't satisfy law of excluded middle or law of contradiction. So, so on top of this, so this will be like kind of uh, information or evidence layer. On top of this, we want to reason kind of probabilistically. So, uh, so we will 
carry this distinction of positive and negative part of the evidence also here. So, I mean, uh, we will use a theory of, of, I mean, what we call non-standard probabilities, which is basically that you just give a positive probabilistic support and negative probabilistic opposition like uh, in a separate way. And then like on top of it, we sort of uh, uh, build the belief of an agent like from gathering probabilistic information from multiple sources. So belief will be a modality in a two layer uh, model framework. And uh, with these kind of formulas starting with belief modality. So on, on top of them, we will build a kind of logic to reason about them and the logic like in a sense will be graded so and it's not surprising right so i will start with just very briefly saying like uh, how the two layer logics uh, look like and there will be more coming later so basically you uh, you distinguish between the layer of uh, the information or events or evidence and the layer of belief where the agent reasons about like her beliefs. So they are kind of separate layers. And you uh, go from the lower layer to the upper in terms of modal operators. So in general, you have the lower language, we have the upper language, which might be distinct. And then you have some modal operators which do not nest and they just, I mean, go from down up and uh, just build kind of atomic formulas of the upper language and on top of them i mean the upper language works so of course you will of course have as well like to have two layer semantics and two layer axiomatizations so it's not surprising so this kind of a uh, picture where you plug in your kind of uh, lower logic of choice the upper logic of choice and you try to figure out like the middle uh, uh, layer of the modal axioms and rules which you need to capture, I mean, how you uh, interpret your modality. So, I mean, details will come later. It's just for you to have in mind that we are building this picture. So I will really start from the lower layer. So from the lower language where I want to uh, capture information and like sources and so on. So not surprisingly, okay, so first I will just just to, to be fair to mention these two layer logics for uncertainty have been uh, uh, around for a long time. So I mean, uh, the most prominent examples are like from 90s, this fucking helper, uh, Megiddo, where I mean they they um, introduced two layer logics for reasoning about probability and belief. So where the lower layer is classical, and the upper logic is formulated in terms of linear inequality. So it's I mean it's not modal. I mean it is, but <laughs> but it's like more about quantitative. Uh, reasoning let's say then i mean of course you can uh, you can um, uh, change the lower logic you can, you can become non classical and it's been done so so in particular uh, Zhu in his paper uh, generalizes this kind of setting to distributive lattices instead of boolean algebras and so in particular, uh, he also includes uh, these two layer logics, which actually had the Belknap Dunn logic as the lower, uh, uh, lower uh, layer. So again, these logics are uh, quantitative. So the upper layer is, uh, I mean, built uh, like reasoning about uh, linear in a Qualities. So what we are after is like a bit more uh, graded reasoning about belief, let's say. So um, Hayek, like in uh, 1998, uh, inter in 
that they use this kind of two layer logics where he uses classical logic for the lower layer of events, then you have a kind of many valued modality P, which is a kind of uh, graded modality, but based on probability measure. And on top of that, because you want to reason about it in a meaningful way, I mean, you, uh, I mean, your one of your first choices would be to use Lukashevich uh, fuzzy logic there. So, so this is actually like, uh, at least for me, this is a point of inspiration, like where you will see that that we will be uh, doing our stuff mostly like like this. So you also you have a very uh, very abstract uh, framework uh, about these two layer uh, syntax and semantics, where actually in this paper from 2014, it's a symbolic paper, but I think there's a recent paper coming out from this or from last year. So Petr Cintula and, and Carles Noguera um, study these two player logics in terms of abstract algebraic logics as like very, uh, in, in a very abstract way so that you can provide kind of plug-in picture, including um, how to prove completeness theorems of certain kind, depending on what kind of completeness you have for your lower and upper uh, layer. Uh, for for malism. So what we will do, we will kind of um, uh, uh, mm, use this kind of Hayek style approach, but of course we uh, do it in this kind of two dimensional positive negative information distinction uh, setting like on the lower layer, but also on the upper one. So uh, what we will do is the kind of two layer logics where the downstairs you would have Belknap down or first degree entailment, then you, you would have a modality uh, for simplicity. Now it's like a single one uh, which goes from down up. And for the upper uh, logic, we will use logics for two dimensional reasoning as I call it, uh, which will be derived from Lukashevich or Gettle many valued logics. So this is like the plan. And let me start with the, with the giving you like the overview of how the lower layer of information works. So this is going to be the Belknap Dunn logic. So first I would like to uh, describe its algebraic semantics. So it is based on the uh, these kind of four value algebra, which we called, uh, call here four. So this is the Belknap done square in a picture up there. So you have four values. You have uh, TF and, and B and N, just like being true, being false, being both true and false and being neither true and false. So this is like the inspiration and uh, uh, you can see this structure as a De Morgan algebra. You have a De Morgan involutive negation on it, which basically flips it uh, along the horizontal line. Uh, you can view it as a by lattice um, and um, uh, so in particular, it is a distributive lattice. So if you read the uh, four values in terms of information, uh, then like N uh, can say that I have no information about certain issue. F might say that I have information against, uh, but not for. Uh, true would say I have information for, but not against. And B can say I have conflicting information like both for and against the issue. So uh, down there, I just depicted this, this thing as a kind of by lattice product of two element chain. So you can um, you can actually see these values as pair of pairs of like uh, classical values one and zero or true or false. So the top is now to be one and zero because you are basically doing product of two with two turn upside down. 
so this is why, because the negative information is kind of turned upside down, right? Because the order which goes uh, like uh, bottom up is going to be the truth order you want to capture with your system. So, so one zero means I have positive information and I have no negative and zero one means I have no positive, but I have negative and so on. So zero, zero is this kind of, uh, I know nothing and one one is I know too much. Sort of. So you can uh, define uh, Belknap done logic. So with the language where we have the lattice conjunction disjunction and uh, De Morgan negation as consequence given by pr uh, preservation of, uh, of T and B. So this is kind of matrix semantics. So the designated values are, are uh, two now. So it's, it's T and B. So it's the one zero and one one. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, it will be convenient in our picture to also kind of have kind of frame semantics for, for the same language. So you can do it in, in two different ways, which basically give you the same uh, consequence in the end. So you can have four valued models. So you have a set of states S and like from like each state gives you a map from uh, atomic propositions to the four. So it's the algebra, which was on the previous slide. So, and then you can compute all the formulas like, I mean, you would do in four. Uh, so this is like one way of looking at things, but the other one are these kind of double valuation semantics, which really visualize uh, the positive and negative um, support, or I mean, support and op opposition like in a very good way. So uh, on the same set of states, you can also like build two uh, forcing relations, like one with plus and one with minus, where like the plus means that you have the value T uh, assigned uh, or both assigned to phi, and minus means you have the value F or both assigned to phi. So it means like, I mean, at least you have some negative information and the first case means at least we have some positive one. So then, I mean, you can uh, come up with these kind of inductive definition, uh, like conjunction is positively supported if both of the subformulas are and uh, conjunction is negatively supported if at least one of them is negatively supported. And uh, negation just uh, swaps minus for plus and plus for minus. So it is this kind of like swapping operation. And then, I mean, you can uh, define uh, the same consequence. I mean, you will get the same consequence as before by simply saying uh, it in terms of like the plus support, let's say. So, so this is the models I will use. And well, uh, uh, not done logic can be axiomatized, for example, as follows. So this is just like the simplest to read way, I would say, maybe not nicest one. Uh, so I can derive the kind of a syntactic consequence a relation, uh, which like uh, by these axioms and rules. So basically, what you want to say is that your negation is demogan and involutive, that your lattice is distributive. Um, so uh, we know that the logic is strongly complete with respect to like all three kinds of semantics I sort of went through. And it's also known to be locally finite among other uh, properties it has. I mean, it's finitely valued, so it's not surprising. So this, this, this means that uh, you have only finitely many uh, formulas uh, which are not kind of provably equivalent, I will say what that means in a given fixed number of proposition uh, atoms. So we have no implication. So, I mean, instead of uh, using provable equivalence, we will use interprovability, which gives you uh, congruence. So you can, I mean, so uh, you can just uh, uh, work with it uh, as you would 
normally work with pool of equivalence. So this is a uh, this is basically the logic which is uh, living downstairs. So I will look at this frame semantics as giving you kind of information or evidence type states. So each state, either you can view it as giving you four valued uh, mapping on the formulas, or you can view it as giving you like a set of formulas which support positively and set of formulas which opposes. So these are the states on which we are going to build a kind of probabilistic um, information. So uh, how do we do it? So the idea to uh, consider some probabilistic extensions uh, of this framework, so namely kind of like four valued probabilities uh, have been out there. So there's this kind of uh, a little bit like more algebraic approach like uh, you can have something like four valued probabilities where basically you would distinguish between uh, completely believing something completely disbelieving being uncertain which is like the three values and the fourth one is like being conflicted about something so you can make sense of it in terms of probabilities so it's been considered by uh, Mike Done. So um, what we will do is, is, a, is a bit like differently designed, let's say, uh, uh, considerations. So we will use, we, we will start with the frame semantics I've just given you. Um, so the idea is to actually look at the frame semantics. So you have your set of states, you have your double valuations, if you wish. And so you put a kind of classical probability measure on top of it. So uh, the simplest way is, I mean, you just you just consider a kind of mass function on S, so which is a function from S to the zero one real interval, which sums up to one. So this should be S, of course. So uh, and then what you can do, because the model gives you for each formula, like set of states in which it is positively supported and a different set of states maybe on which it is negatively opposed, then I mean, you can compute like their measures. So simply you generate this kind of like assignment, which is like pair of functions, P plus and P minus, where P plus gives you the sum of measures of those states which support phi positively. And P minus gives you sum of mass of all states which oppose phi. So uh, it's enough just to consider one because the other you can look at through the negation because the negation swaps between the plus support and the minus opposition. So, uh, so this is like, this is the idea where you, uh, you will get a kind of pair of maps uh, based on like mass function on your state. So look at the states as a kind of uh, giving you types of information and then you kind of like put mass on top of that and you just see like, like uh, how, how big sum you just get for phi and how big you get against phi, right? So the thing is that these maps are not classical probabilities because they are built on uh, semantics, which is not classical, but they satisfy certain nice properties. So they are in a way probabilities. So namely, always you will end up between zero and one, of course. Uh, they are monotone, so you will, um, you will just, if, if phi proves psi in the BD, then of course, like P plus of phi would be below P plus of psi. Uh, and then you have this kind of inclusion exclusion scheme, which just says that uh, positive probability of conjunction plus positive probability of disjunction should be the sum of positive probabilities of the two subformulas. So this is not quite uh, uh, Kolmogorov's axioms. Of course, you have no additivity. And also what you don't assume in general, of course, this is where we started from. You don't assume that uh, the um, should be yeah. You don't assume that the positive support of negation is actually given as a negative uh, support of phi in our framework. But 
Classically, it would be one minus the positive support for phi. So this doesn't have to be true anymore because we don't think that positive and negative uh, uh, information is kind of complementary. So you can you can have uh, you can have uh, you can have probability like positive probability of phi and not phi bigger than zero, and you can have positive probability of phi or not phi, um, like. Um, this should be the other way around, right? Like strictly less than one. Sorry about the typo. <laughs> Second one. So this is basically, so what we did, like we carried out the uh, uh, independent toe interlinked treatment of positive and negative information to the probabilistic, uh, probabilistic level, let's say. So, um, Intuitively, you can look at the, because you have this assignment, which for, I mean, each formula, you basically from one mass function on the states, you get like two values. So we get a pair of like positive and negative probability of phi. So uh, you can intuitively look in the, in this kind of uh, continuous uh, generalization of the Bell-Lambda's Square, right? So, so now I mean it is a kind of by lattice product of the of the inter uh, interval zero one. Um, so you can uh, you can see. So if if I'm in the in the zero zero, it really means that uh, that that the sum of masses of all states supporting phi was zero. So either there were none, or I just didn't uh, kind of put any positive mass on them, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm not really taking them into account. And the same for uh, non-phi. So this means like I'm taking no information. Uh, if I sum up to one one, then basically it means like I'm, uh, I just put like too much mass like on both of them or not too much, but like, um, uh, and uh, if you look at the vertical line, this is the line where, I mean, the pairs of numbers look like that the left one is, uh, so one of them is one minus the other one. So you are here, you are in the, in the aim of uh, classical probabilities almost because you have that, uh, that probability of negation is computed as one minus the probability of the formula. So, so this is like this. While on the horizontal line, you have pairs of numbers where both are the same. So you are kind of like indifferent, let's say. And then, I mean, you can you can make sense of uh, of the square like in a, in more uh, detailed way. Uh, so. Um, as I said, like one mass function can be seen as kind of one source. So I mean, I just put my put my mass on the on the on the states, and it just gives me one probabilistic assignment. But of course, like I mean, I want to also treat the situation right uh, uh, multiple sources. So if I have multiple sources, what I do is is I can choose a kind of aggregation uh, function which. Uh, aggregates the, like, I mean, I get a probability assignment for each source. And if I have more than one, then I mean, I, I can choose a function which, uh, which uh, aggregates them. So um, some very simple examples. So for example, you can take minimum and minimum. So you can take minimum positive and minimum negative information in a pro probabilistic way, like both positive and negative probability. So uh, this makes sense. For example, if all sources are uh, kind of relied on equally and uh, the investigator doesn't want to, I mean, draw conclusions hastily. So you are extremely cautious and then you minimize the degree, which means like you, you put your belief to the degree where all the sources, at least to the degree, say that it is positively the case or it is like negatively not the case, right? So this is one way. Uh, and so this assignment is still assignment from formulas of Belnam done to this product. 
but it's not a probability. It doesn't have to be the future state minimum. So, I mean, you just lose some kind of uh, uh, structural properties, let's say. Another very simple one uh, is if you take maximum in both positive and negative coordinates, which makes sense if uh, you think that all the sources are kind of perfect. So you trust them implicitly and then you just maximize that degree, which means like you, if at least one source thinks uh, phi to that degree, then I mean, just take that degree. And, and uh, so this is uh, uh, a different one, but still, uh, I mean, it leads assignment, which in general doesn't have to be probability. And so, of course, you can kind of weight the sources. You can put weight on them because uh, you just trust them in a different uh, way, let's say. And then you can take the weighted average. So this is one of the like most, uh, um, I think, or not most used, but most well-known aggregations, um, uh, which make sense, for example, if you really, if you have a huge amount of data and you have uh, many sources and you need to uh, do some kind of meaningful analysis on top of them and you have enough computational power to do so, then I mean, you, you might want to do this. And this strategy yields a probability assignment. So what you get is like, uh, again, will satisfy the axioms of non-standard probabilities. So uh, how the belief is um, uh, formed. So this is just a, a kind of survey simple picture. So we have the frame, uh, we have the double valuation model on top of it. So for each formula that model provides its positive and negative extension. So this is a picture so they can intersect and they don't have to cover the whole of uh, the set of states. Uh, so the positive extension is the upper part, the negative extension is the right hand side. And so this empty part is kind of, uh, are the states which, which, which don't really say. So uh, every source just gives me a pair of probabilities. And when I have multiple sources, then by aggregation, uh, I just have a kind of assignment on the language just gives me kind of like pair of values, like belief, uh, let's say degrees of belief. So the belief assignment can actually be, again, a probability that's satisfying the axioms or not. So in the cases of min, min and max, max, it was not, and but it still is kind of monotone. So it still uh, reflects the probability on the uh, lower logic. And it plays well with the negation. So at least what I get is that the negative degree of belief of phi is the positive degree of belief of negation of phi. So uh, now I will turn to, I mean, our design shows for the upper language and the upper uh, formalism where we want to reason about uh, formulas which are about the belief of the agent. So we'll have like single agent belief formed in this way. So in, uh, in some of the cases, I will need the belief, I mean, or want the belief to satisfy the probability axioms. And in the other cases, I just require it to be monotone and coherent. So playing well with the, the work negation. So, um, if I want to express probability axioms, then there was this axiom, which was this inclusion exclusion, which uh, uses plus. So uh, you would like some kind of language where you can actually express uh, plus, for example. So not surprisingly, uh, we will derive from Lukashevich uh, logic L and but we want to carry this, this kind of um, two-dimensionality of positive and negative um, part of uh, the belief also here. So we want some kind of uh, by lattice negation. So we want uh, the Morgan negation from downstairs. We want something like that here because we want to, we want to express these, these things. 
So these uh, things about what belief should satisfy, like in forms of axioms. So um, we will take Lukashevich logic and we extend it with uh, another involutive negation, but like it will not be uh, the case because we uh, we don't want to be complete with respect to chains anymore, but with respect to these kind of squares, which I will show you in a minute. So it will not be a kind of trivial task because normally if you want to extend Lukashevich with another involutive demogan negation, then basically, I mean, you just get the old one. So, so what I will do, I will take the standard Lukashevich algebra. So on the zero one real interval, I have the lattice part, which is given by minimum and maximum. And then I have implication and strong conjunction, which are computed like this. So they form a, a designated pair. And I have a negation, which basically computes one minus. Uh, so, and I want to do this kind of twist structure or this kind of by lattice kind of product. So I basically need to turn this lattice upside down and to define Lukashevich algebra or MV algebra on top of that. So the natural choice is, is this one. So I turn the interval upside down. So now one is bottom and zero is top. So I swap minimum and maximum therefore. And here I get another residuated pair, which is like strong disjunction, namely plus, and I mean minus. So, so this is how it looks like. And Lukashevich logic is super nice and cool in a way that it can define all these connectives. Like for example, if you take just the Lukashevich implication and negation, you get a complete set. So you can define everything else from them. So, and I mean, uh, here, I mean, you can spell out the negation really as one minus, just gives you the same one. So then I will take this kind of twisted product or uh, by lattice like structure, and I, I extend it with this swap negation. So what I will get is this. So, I mean, this is like the, the square. The only designated value will be the top here. It's kind of product like algebra. So if I forget about the new negation, its logic will be Lukashevich because it's, it's product of two MB algebras. Um, so what's interesting, I mean, is now like to look at and spell out how we compute with pairs of values, like the positive, negative. So, I mean, the first two is just like you would do in by lattice. So conjunction is now conjunction of positive and disjunction of negative information and vice versa. So the interesting place where you are actually making a choice is what will be a kind of negative counterpart of implication. So, I mean, here the choice is like minus. <laughs> um, and then, I mean, uh, the rest sort of follows. So, what, uh, so this is like one point where, where this is different from uh, other frameworks, which I will like very briefly show you later, because here in a negative part of implication, we do not mix positive and negative information of the subformula. So we just, I mean, keep them separate all the way. So, so this is like one way of doing things. I mean, um, so what we get, uh, so the kind of bilatis negation, which swaps along the horizontal is here. Uh, the, this this uh, Lukashevich negation, which ends up looking like you negate both of them, like both positive and negative information is symmetry along the middle point. So if you compose them, then you use, uh, you just get the symmetry along the vertical. So we have kind of a uh, conflation there. So the negation, which um, um, you would have, if you have the full bike lattice framework, then you would want to have this one. So for example, if I take formula, which says that the two negations are equivalent, then if this formula is designated to the top, then it means that alpha is actually on the vertical. So I can sort of pick up, like I can say that something is on the classical, let's say, probabilistic line. Um, and the two negations are, the 
distinct. So you can't, can't prove like uh, one from the other and vice versa. Uh, so what you get is a kind of extension of Lukashevich logic. So Lukashevich logic is like the left hand side uh, and the modus ponens rule. So what we are actually, what's enough to add is, is just that the new negation is involutive and some kinds kind of axioms for the composed negation, namely a new rule pops up here. It just tells you that the designated value is like on top. So if you flip it along the vertical, you get the designated value. So this logic is nice in, in a way. I mean, you have the like the new negation normal form. You have a deduction theorem, which somehow uh, combines the, the way how, how you do deduction theorem in Lukashevich. So this is like n times the fusion uh, with the new rule from him. And using standard, like finite standard completeness of Lukashevich with respect to its standard algebra, you can actually prove a finite strong standard completeness with respect to this product algebra here. So this is like the first logic. Um, and but you can, I mean, I'm probably running a bit out of time. Uh, this is not the only way how to do it. So so the, the, like this was the case of probabilistic belief. There were the cases where what we get as belief is not really probability. So we don't need to express the axioms, we do not really need to count with uh, degrees of belief, like doing pluses and minuses and one minus and so on. And so if we are just monotone and coherent, we maybe just want to compare uh, degrees of belief. So we can do the same like kind of game played with Gedel logic instead, because Gedel is kind of natural uh, many valued logic with standard semantics on a zero one interval, which is basically just about the order. So it turns out to be the case that it's convenient to take it all equipped with this kind of bad delta operator, which uh, puts one to one and uh, zero to everything else. So it just cuts uh, at one. So um, the standard Gettle algebra looks like this. So you still you have the same lattice, but the Gettle implication, I mean, gives you one if antecedent is below the consequent, and it gives you the consequent in any other case. So the negation, if you compute it as A implies zero, then negation of one will be zero, and negation will be zero of anything else than one. So I mean, it's, it's just um, um, this kind of uh, negation. So here it's it's a bit more maybe like puzzling and not immediate or I mean maybe not uh, maybe I don't know someone don't like it. So what I want is to turn again the lattice upside down and to define ghetto algebra with delta on that. <laughs> so what uh, what now I do I will use co-implication. So you might know this connective for from by implication. Uh, logic. So it is like as implication is res, uh, residuum of the conjunction here of the meet, then this one is residuum of join. So, so it's like kind of um, what it does is that it, it gives you zero whenever like the co-implied thing is below the one co-implying and it gives you the co-implied thing else. <laughs> so um, the good news is I will not really like use this in the language because it's definable via the delta. So <laughs> it's just that to give you the structure. And it turns out that the counterpart of delta will be simply double ghetto negation. So again, I do the same kind of twisted product and I just equipped it with the bilatis negation. So what I what I get here is again like designated value is just the top. And so how I compute the negative part of implication is now the co-implication of the negative part. So again, I do not mix positive and negative here in this place. This I just put it in blue. And I mean, it's not really hard to figure out the rest. Um, and you, what you end up with is, is you just extend Gettle logic 
with delta, so these are the standard axioms and a rule for delta, I just extended with this part. So now we have a bit more axiom than we had before, but it's basically saying things about the new negation. So the most intriguing would be these two, and I'm not going into them, but it's just, uh, what I still get is a nice system. So I still have negation of normal form. I have a form of deduction theorem, which combines the delta deduction theorem with this kind of new composed negation. By the way, delta would be actually definable in the language, but if I did it without delta, then I, I run in uh, like some kind of, I mean, unwanted, not difficulties, but it's not nice when you uh, start proving completeness. So using standard strong completeness of Gettle with delta with respect to its standard semantics, uh, you can derive standard strong, strong completeness of this logic with respect to this product. So this is for the belief, which is not necessarily probabilistic. So um, there's another way of doing things. Like this was kind of bilattice version of the logics on the cheap. So just take the twisted product of the lattice part and then you cheat a bit because you interpret these kind of things with never combining positive and negative information for implication. So you can do it the honest way. You can really go um, while doing kind of bilattice product of the zero one interval, while the designated values now would be the edge between one zero and one one. So everything of which the first uh, number is one is designated. So it's this kind of filter. Um, and you use this kind of uh, way of interpreting negative information about implication as giving you like the positive information of antecedent and negative information of the consequent. And as end, you use the strong Lukashevich conjunction. And if you try to figure out the rest, what goes on, I mean, you uh, immediately see that you are in this case where this is a kind of weak implication. So it doesn't give you like the weak equivalence is not congruential, but you can define a strong one, which is so. Um, and I mean, you can, again, you can um, see some now like these negations, like this one is the same, but the Lukashevich negation gives you something else than we had before. So they have different properties, namely the tilde A is always on the vertical. Uh, again, like you can kind of define that alpha is on the vertical. Uh, you can also sort of define that alpha is in the left triangle, which would be here where you are kind of in a case of incomplete information. You can also touch the uh, right one, which is like this one, where you sort of are saying you are in the con uh, conflicting part of the square. And you can like with this formula, you can actually also kind of say that alpha is below beta in the information order, which would go from left, left to right. So in the other by lattice order. So, um, I mean, this is what you can do. You can axiomatize the logic. It's actually quite simple. Uh, you take the Lukashevich logic, so we'll have modus ponens as the only rule, and you just add a bunch of, bunch of axioms. So namely this one saying that negation of implication is, is this kind of fusion. Um, again, everything kind of works smoothly, and it might remind you of Nelson's logic N4, right? So this is like the way how our implication in Nelson's logic, I mean, is kind of working, which you precisely get when you switch to Gettle in this, in this picture. So when you switch to Gettle and you make the same consideration, you take the bilattice product and you define negative part of implication as simply a positive part of the antecedent meet negative part of the consequence. This should be not Lukashevich, sorry, just stay there. Um, then what you end up with is actually you have Nelson's logic N4 plus the prelinearity axiom. This is what you get, which is uh, which I think is kind of nice. So this is what you can use for the uh, case of monotone coherent belief. So how much time do you 
still give me? Uh, well, you got about five minutes into uh, uh, for yeah. yeah. Okay. I was too slow. <laughs> so basically, uh, we want to put these things together in a two-layer framework. So we just went through the uh, lower language, upper language, and forming of uh, the belief. So uh, the, our case studies just look like for the upper uh, logic in case of probabilistic belief, we want to take one derived from Lukashevich and from the monotone case, just one derived from Gettel. So one of the two options. So um, I will not probably go much through the <laughs> abstract general framework, how actually the semantics <laughs> works here. Sorry for that. I will just give you uh, the kind of overview of the cases. So for the coherent monotone belief, so uh, I take the, yeah, I take the uh, syntax to be the Belknap down, downstairs single belief modality and upstairs I have the language of Gadel with Delta. So my axiomatization looks like I have the Belknap done axiomatization downstairs. So uh, I have uh, the Gadel with Delta and negation upstairs, which I showed you. And for the part of axiomatizing the modality of belief, I will throw in like these axioms and these rules. So the rule simply claims the monotonicity and the axiom simply says that the belief uh, uh, plays well with the new, new negation. So, and by doing like applying these, uh, this abstract framework of two layer logic as the lower logic is strongly complete with respect to the four algebra and the upper is strongly complete with respect to this algebra, then I actually obtain like strong completeness um, with respect to four based and this algebra measured frames, which validate the axioms, which is like kind of nice. Uh, only in this case, of course, uh, what these axioms actually enforce on the model downstairs is not really uh, what we started with. It's some kind of monotone coherent assignment on uh, uh, formulas. It's not really coming from aggregating probabilities. And uh, it's, I think it's in general not possible to, uh, to I mean, expect anything more. So uh, with the other way of doing it, like more uh, by flattest way. So here, that would be the Nelson logic N4 plus linearity, what you need to do is like here in the monotonicity rule, you need to use the strong implication. So both B phi implies B psi and negation of B psi implies negation of B phi have to be included. Otherwise, uh, basically you get the same result. So for the probabilistic belief, it's a bit more cool. So in the first case, uh, I will use the Lukashevich logic extended with the negation. And now I can I can express the import export or inclusion exclusion axiom like this. So I will take I will say that belief of this junction should be equivalent with belief of phi minus belief of conjunction plus belief of psi. Uh, and again, the rest is as it was before. And now um, I need to know that the lower logic is actually locally finite to be able to apply the general completeness theorem uh, and strongly complete with respect to algebra four. And then we had a finitely strongly you know, complete logic on top of them. So we get this kind of finite strong completeness. So Lukashevich is not strongly complete, only finitely strongly standard complete. So. Uh, and actually, uh, if you take frames which validate these model axioms, then you get back uh, an assignment which is non-standard probability. So for your kind of counter examples, you take a kind of single source models where uh, the assignment is really probability. So it's almost like um, the best thing you can get. So. Similar, like similar thing uh, holds for the other way of doing Lukashevich, only here you need to be a bit more careful. So again, because this is the weak 
implication. So while here it's okay, here you need to use the strong implication and here you need to uh, include like the dual of the axiom as well, just uh, so that you get the same result. So it's just kind of design choices. Um, uh, I may, yeah, I mean, I may skip the example. I just wanted to show you that we can actually say things with formulas here by say, I mean, um, the formula says something if, uh, if uh, I mean, if the formula is designated then it has to be so. So um, you can now, I mean, you can express things like having rather small degree of conflict or having rather big degree of conflict. I mean, in a naive way, but still it's there. So this is what I, what's like my point is carrying the contradictoriness and the con conflict all the way up there because now I can use statements like this as assumptions and, and model some things where I, about certain formulas, I want to say that a agent is rather conflicted about them and what follows from that, right? So, so um, this is uh, to sum up what, uh, what, we, what we did and what we are still working on. Uh, so basically what we are mostly working on now is like various uh, things about the upper layer logics. So for the uh, first Lukashevich derived logic I've shown you and like for the algebra on which it is based, I mean, when you vary the set of designated values. So for all these kinds of logics you can get, some of them are not that nice. I mean, some of them are nice. You can have a kind of, uh, um, maybe I wouldn't call it proof theory, but it's still proof theory. So you can have constraint tableaus for them, which are complete and you can prove decidability and NP completeness. So, I mean, this is nice. Uh, so we are looking into more structural proof theory at the moment. So for the other part of the story, like for the Gettle uh, derived logic it's pretty recent. So we haven't like really uh, done much yet. But I mean, we, we think that uh, we can pretty much, I mean, write down display calpli easily and maybe they are already sort of are out there. So again, like structural proof theory is work in progress. And then of course, like structural proof theory for the whole two layer thing together. So this is the reference. So this is a, a, our paper. So our recent paper in Dali last year, where you can find like part of the picture, not, not the ghetto part of the picture, but at least something. And so, I mean, you see, we, of course, we want to start from this and we want to do way more if it makes sense. So, so this is it. There's some references if we want to look at them. And thank you. I'm sorry I took so long. <laughs> thank you.